So Joe Biden is set to be sworn in on Wednesday, tomorrow by the time that most of you see this video, and he's already planning a number of day one executive orders that I think are objectively good. Um, now, I do have a criticism of Joe Biden that I will be addressing, but I will give him credit where it's due. Like, my goal here going forward is not to be a hack. If Joe Biden does something that I disagree with, something that's damaging and harmful, I'm going to call him out for it and I'm going to try to hold him accountable. If he does something that I think is good, then I'm going to give him credit for it. Like, I'm not trying to create any sort of narrative, uh, either Joe Biden good or bad. As a leftist, I think that you all know where I stand. Joe Biden has an extensive record that is extremely problematic and conservative. So overall, he doesn't get a honeymoon. You know, I don't give him this grace period where, you know, for the first couple of weeks, you know, something that he does, I just brush it off as well. He's learning. No, he knows what he's doing. But when it comes to uh, these executive orders that he is reportedly planning, I think these are good. Uh, you know, I've got to give him credit for this. And these are things that most reasonable people will be in favor of. So as Michael Scheer and Peter Baker of the New York Times reports, on his first day in office alone, Mr. Biden intends a flurry of executive orders that will be partly substantive and partly symbolic. They include rescinding the travel ban on several predominantly Muslim countries, rejoining the Paris Climate Change Accord, extending pandemic-related limits on evictions and student loan repayments, issuing a mask mandate for federal property and interstate travel, and ordering agencies to figure out how to reunite children separated from families after crossing the border, according to a memo circulated on Saturday by Ron Klain, his incoming White House Chief of Staff, and obtained by the New York Times. The blueprint of executive action comes after Mr. Biden announced that he will push Congress to pass a $1.9 trillion package of economic stimulus and pandemic relief, signaling a willingness to be aggressive on policy issues and confronting Republicans from the start to take their lead from him. He also plans to send sweeping immigration legislation on his first day in office, providing a pathway to citizenship for 11 million people in the country illegally, along with his promise to vaccinate 100 million Americans for the coronavirus in his first 100 days. It is an expansive set of priorities for a new president that could be a defining test of his deal-making abilities and command of the federal government. Now, when it comes to him saying he's going to vaccinate 100 million Americans within the first 100 days, if he is actually able to accomplish this, which currently it seems like a logistical nightmare, um, he really does get credit for that. When it comes to, uh, you know, rescinding the most horrible things that Trump did, even symbolic things such as the Muslim man, because right now, you know, it's very difficult to travel globally um, because of coronavirus. But these are all things that are really important and meaningful. And I expected this, like I expected him to get us back into the Paris Climate Accord because this was one of the signature achievements of the Obama era. And this isn't good. Like, just the Paris Climate Accord alone isn't good, but it's still better than nothing. It's it's better than nothing. It is meaningful. It does make a difference. Um, it, it, just to have a president that actually believes in anthropogenic climate change in and of itself, I think that is important. It is meaningful, given that we don't have much time left to act on climate change. So wherever there is a victory, I'm going to take it, even if it might not necessarily be enough. But things like, you know, mask mandates federally, you know, you can't impose a federal mask mandate uh, but what he can do is make sure that if you're on federal property, you are required to wear a mask, interstate travel. That's also important. So these are things that I think will make a huge difference in the short term, in the short term. And that's important. Like you have to take meaningful action to make sure that long term we are in a better place. But on your first day, I do expect you to focus on the short term. And these are easy things that he can accomplish when it comes to student loan debt cancellation. I don't know what he's going to do. There is some pressure from members of Congress, including Chuck Schumer, uh, to cancel at least $50,000 worth of student debt. We'll wait and see. It seems like Joe Biden is reluctant to do that. Uh, but these are great things, and, and I'm in favor of it. And that's not all. Uh, to the chagrin of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, he also will be killing off the Keystone XL pipeline. And as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams reports, President-elect Joe Biden is reportedly planning on the day of his inauguration to rescind a federal permit allowing construction of the Keystone XL pipeline in the United States, a move environmentalists said would represent an immense victory for the planet attributable to years of tireless indigenous-led opposition 
to the Dirty Energy Project. CBC News reported Sunday that the words rescind Keystone XL pipeline permit appear on a list of executive actions supposedly scheduled for day one of Biden's presidency, which begins with his swearing in on Wednesday. The withdrawal of the Keystone XL permit is among several environment-related actions Biden plans to take via executive order during his first day in office, a list that includes rejoining the Paris Climate Accord. Now look, it's easy to give Biden credit for this, but you also have to give credit to the indigenous groups who never let their foot off the gas, who applied continuous pressure on both the Canadian and U.S. governments to kill this project off. So this is good. Like, I'm going to take a victory wherever I can get a victory. Times are dark right now, and so long as we're moving in the right direction, no matter how large of a step that we take, I think currently I'm looking for anything, and this is all really encouraging to me. Having said all of that, though, Biden gets credit if he does, in fact, uh, do all of this, but one area where we can't let him off the hook for is the lie that he uh, peddled about stimulus checks. We were told many times that if Democrats retook the Senate, we get $2,000 checks. All you've got to do is vote for Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, give us the Senate, and, ex and in exchange for that, we will give you $2,000 checks. Uh, well, now he's backtracking on that. Rather than giving us $2,000 checks, now we're being promised $1,400 checks. Because if you uh, subtract the $600 that we already received uh, from the $2,000, then we get $1,400. And $1,400 plus $600 equals $2,000. Except that's not what you said, though. That's not what you said. This is a literal mailer that Raphael Warnock's campaign sent out with a fake $2,000 check. This doesn't say $1,400. It says $2,000. And as Rebecca Bitten puts it, no matter how you rationalize this, it was a bait and switch. Using a visual device to motivate voters was effective. Backtracking and changing the amount on the check is a betrayal. And she's absolutely right. Like, you can't just do that and then immediately go back on that promise. Like, of course, you get credit for the other good things that you're doing. But what kind of bullshit is this? Where you tell us $2,000 checks are coming. We just got to give Democrats the Senate. And then you get the Senate back. And now suddenly you say, no, 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 it's going to be $1,400. Look, it should have been $2,000 per month. So the fact that all we're asking for in this instance is a one-time check of $2,000, I think that's pretty reasonable. Look at other countries. Canada, the UK, they have given their residents more. We haven't gotten the relief necessary. And going forward, I hope that Biden actually sees to it that there is a continued uh, relief effort and not just like this one-time check or payment every couple of months. Uh, but this is not okay. And I'm glad that members of the squad are actually holding his feet to the fire. AOC spoke to the Washington Post and she also is against this 180 from the Biden administration saying $2,000 means $2,000. $2,000 does not mean $1,400. And she's absolutely right. If you are out of the gate, going back on a major promise, something that will drastically improve people's lives in the short term, like, you're setting yourself up for failure. So on one hand, the things that he's doing that are good, the federal mask mandate, you know, uh, basically, I also expect him to reinstate DACA as well, uh, prioritizing immigration reform, a huge $1.9 trillion relief package. I mean, the devil is in the details, but these are positive things. But you can't just like, dangle $2,000 in front of people as a motivator and then immediately go back on that promise because going forward in future elections, the midterm coming up in 2022, how do you expect people to believe you? So look, ultimately, I've said this once, I'll say it again, Joe Biden and Democrats, they've got to deliver. When you control the totality of government, all eyes are on you. Well, except for the Supreme Court, but all eyes are on you. So if something goes wrong, you're going to be held accountable. So, you know, it seems as if going into this being sworn in and on day one planning a lot of things that is that is a good sign it tells me that at least for now he knows there's a lot of crises going on simultaneously that he has to address immediately but at the same time by rescinding you know this promise going back on the two thousand dollar check promise that tells me that you still don't fully get it you still are going to be um out of touch with the needs of people so look it it's it's one thing to, you know, do all of these good things. He gets credit for that. But this is seriously, like, this pisses me the fuck off with the $2,000 check thing. Like, I, I think that everyone 
is reasonable for expecting $2,000. It's not like we're stupid and naive for thinking, oh, well, of course, by saying we get a $2,000 check, he meant we get a $1,400 check because we already got $600. Like, nobody thought that. No reasonable person thought that. So, you know, we hold him accountable for that and then praise him when he does things that are good. This is the way that I intend to react to the Biden administration. But overall, you know, if I could make a prediction... I think I'm largely going to be dissatisfied with Joe Biden's administration because he isn't as progressive as anyone needs him to be currently. In fact, he's not progressive at all. Um, but having said that, though, will he be better than Donald Trump? Yeah, I fully expect him to be better than Donald Trump. But the bar is pretty fucking low if we're talking about Donald Trump um, and any Republican, given how far to the right they've shifted. But, you know, having said that, though, this is what we can expect from uh, the first day of Joe Biden's administration. And it looks good. Just like, don't go back on promises like the $2,000 check. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man.